It was the Hebrew. Isaiah 53 has many words that seem to be saying the man described as being punished for the sins of others. In Isaiah 53, 4, the words, our sickness that he was bearing, or, or sin, sickness, sin, or sickness because we sin, is probably the best way to interpret that, that he was bearing our suffering that he endured. 53, 5. He was wounded because of our sins, crushed because of our iniquities. He bore the chastisement that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. 53, 7. He was maltreated. 53, 6. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. 52, 11. It is their punishment that he bears. And in 53, 10. But the Lord chose to crush him by disease that he made himself an offering for guilt. He be given a long life. To see his children. Um, where was that? Uh, 53 6. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of all of us. That's what that offering for guilt is about. I'm going to sum it up. And then I'm going to read how God had me type it. We've kind of revised it and made it better. But the best to just kind of make it clear. These people are sick. Because they're sinners. They're not observant Jews. Okay? And Isaiah 53 is, is a story of a man who was just like them. A sinner. You know, uh, a man with troubles, sorrows, suffering, familiar with disease. He's not having a good life. But he rises to the treetop, the crown of being God's righteous servant who makes the many righteous. Okay, the fact they, that they're not righteous gives them guilt. They feel guilty. Nothing, nothing's working. They feel guilty before God, before their families, before their employers. They feel guilty. And they're sick of it. Okay, it's about guilt. So, but what does the righteous servant do? He goes to these people. By the way, the first six verses are in a, a combined quote, beginning at, the quotes begin at verse 1 and end in verse 6. I don't see anybody in Jesus. For Judaism or, or Toby a singer or anybody who talks about Isaiah 53 even remotely understanding that or, or showing it in their writings. The, the, the quotes aren't there. They got picked up by the JPS who started from scratch. Okay, uh, just about every other version that's out there of translation, including Art Scroll, uh, does not have the quotes and it is important. Uh, but anyway, so those are the people, they're the witnesses of him. These are the people who say, Can you believe what we have heard? Who is the arm of the Lord been revealed on? It's Keith Ellis McCarty. Okay? And because they believe that, that God is actually acting in the world, that he has forgiven their sins and remembers them no more. And, and, and I will tell them, this would be my big teaching, since everybody's sin free from, from the covenant, uh, the new covenant, uh, Jeremiah 31, that comes with the angel of the covenant that you desire. Um, they come back to Judaism. They become observant. They start showing up the synagogues again. That's how I make the many righteous. Basically, it's more like a, uh, I keep the many righteous. But God says you couldn't really put that in there. Um, because, you know, that, that's the other proof of who I am. I'm the only person who understands this. And you can't understand it if you're not the man. Nobody can put it together. Nobody. You have to be the, um, uh, the man that goes through it. The flower of fire. So, but God has to get me ready. I'm a prophet. All the prophets went through this to some degree. I can assure you Moses did. Um, wounded. Well, anyway, all those words I just read. And so what that does is it prepares me to go to them. He was wounded for our sins. Yes, but not in some human sacrifice type of, type of thinking. 
No, I was, but that was to prepare me to go to them and remove their guilt. I was myself, okay, I'll go, I'll go get their guilt off of them, God. I agree to it. And you'll find out with Ezekiel, he, he didn't get that opportunity to make an agreement with God. I did. But um, that, that's what that's about. It's, yeah, I was wounded. I was bruised, crushed, and I was treated. And he ain't ever been maltreated until he's been maltreated by God. I promise you, he's good. And he sets things up. He's real good, yeah. So, uh, but that's what, what happened. So, I had to go through this process of breaking me, taking my will from me, making me humble, particularly to God. And it's a long, slow process. And he had to teach me. I was an atheist for 50 years. He had to teach me the entire scripture. And mind you, he, he spoke to me for the first time when I was 50. But he was with me from my birth. Jeremiah was saved from the womb. And Jer he was with Jeremiah to make sure he was the real godly, priestly, uh, dedicated to God man. That's not why he came to me. And I didn't know that he was orchestrating my life so I would fit these verses. Uh, including getting a shot in the abdomen uh, that, 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 that really set off dormant cancer cells and gave me the cancer that crushed my life. How did God crush you with cancer? He had me shot. <laughs> That's just something we laugh about all the time. Um, but, but that made me a man of suffering, familiar with disease. That's just how he did it. I mean, he's, he's how about this? God is old school still. So uh, you got a great humor to him. You know, he's fun to, fun to be around, uh, except when you're in the fire of refinement, that's only about 5% of the time, <laughs> or 10%. The other 90% are pretty tough. But uh, so that, that's, that's the story of Isaiah 53. That's what it's all about. Uh, and when I say the quotes are important, it's because in the first two verses, you don't have any of those words of suffering. They come in three, four, five, and six. Uh, but it, 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 it ties all those people as the witnesses who can believe what we have heard. And he came from Aaron land. Uh, and then you start getting into the, the words of, of, of wounds and, and suffering and everything. But the quotes tie it together. So moving on with Mr. Ezekiel, because Ezekiel is the key to understand Isaiah 53. Why? He goes through it. He shows us that he, and the little story I just told you, and I'll take all those words of suffering, and we just call it the fire of refinement, preparing me to be a prophet suitable for God's purposes. God said to Ezekiel, but the house of Israel will refuse to listen to you, for they refuse to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel are brazen of forehead and stubborn of heart. Now I will make your face as hard as theirs, and your forehead as brazen as theirs. I will make your forehead like adamant, shamir, harder than flint. Do not fear them, do not be dismayed by them. Though they are a rebellious breed. See what he's saying? I gotta, say, I gotta get you ready. I gotta get you ready. How will God make Ezekiel suitable for his purpose, making him as hard and brazen as the houses of Israel and Judah? Remove his fear of them and his dismay when they do not listen to him? Uh, in, in, in fact, they laughed at him. Um, um, Rashi says in his commentary, um, just as with the verses of Isaiah 53.3, Ezekiel was despised, shunned, and held no account. And I joined that myself. <laughs> I listened to him. <laughs> you know, I, I can hear it. Well, that's just not our faith. I, I don't care if he's got some, some very interesting things to say. He, he knows what uh, a man divine being is. He understands that. Uh, we get it. Judaism doesn't recognize the Holy Spirit as being a person. That's how you become a divine a man, divine being. Because all, the angel of his presence is always with God. 
in the angel of his presence is the Holy Spirit. You say, how's that? That's being an angel and a spirit. God created an angel, and for his body, instead of, instead of giving him a human form with wings, his body is the spirit of God itself. So he's an angel and he's a spirit. And, and God is always in his spirit. I'm always in my spirit. Or my spirit's in me. I don't know how you want to say it. He's always in his spirit, and there's an angel of his presence, which means wherever his presence is, which is which is his mind, by the way, the elements that constitute his mind. That that's wherever that is, he is, just like us. Wherever my brain is, my head, that's where you know, that, that's where I'm at. And so, it, when the spirit alights upon you, it includes God. You say, "Well, why didn't you say that in the letter?" Because he wanted me to teach you. It's a further proof. Of who I am, but anywho, uh, anyhow. So how does he do this? How does he make him? He, he toughen him up and everything else by pain and suffering, with maltreatment, crushing, bruising, chastisement, and punishment to remove his self will and refine his soul and remove the fury of his spirit, while the hand of the Lord was upon him. The same words used in Isaiah 53. God does not crush Ezekiel with disease so that he would offer himself for guilt to God and agree to bear an oppressive judgment. God seizes him. If <laughs> you don't understand, you don't say no to God. You know, and you know what the Christian disease is about. That was for the Gentiles who were going to have the unblemished Lamb of God. You can't offer a blemish. A blameless animal. Jesus cannot be that man. He knew what he was going to do. Jesus cannot be the man of Isaiah 53 because he's not diseased. Well, the man is diseased. He, he doesn't fit the description. That's why I had to go through cancer. Just because he's a Christian. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get on with that too. Uh, but see, he didn't have to do that to Ezekiel. He just wanted to him. And this is what Ezekiel says. <laughs> this is too funny. A spirit seized me and carried me away. I went in bitterness and the fury of my spirit while the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Well, you figure if you're in the hand of God, the last thing you're thinking is bitterness and fury. I tell you, the fire refinement is nothing. <laughs> It's too hard. I told him, I said, look, I'm just, you know, I'm a pretty tough guy. You read my story, you'll, you'll see. I, I was, I, I got a lot of scrapes, but uh, I told you, I'm just too tough for me. I can't take this anymore. I begged for death a thousand times, and I cursed him a thousand more. <laughs> and he says, and you did it face to face. This is when he, I'm surrounded by his power. He, he, he'll make me feel that his presence is usually, well, I, usually up here. And, and so, you know, he'll take your head directly, <laughs> put your eyes right where he wants you. So that's, that, that's, that's where I am today. That's, so so I, when I'm talking to him, it, it, it gives you a different aspect of just, I'm sure, praying to God, thinking he just, you don't really have any concept. I mean, I'm talking to a spot. It's like an invisible person, you know, it's like you, 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 your best friend just became invisible, but when he talks, wherever he's talking, you know, you, you turn that way, even though you can't see him. It's natural. Okay, and, and then this one. Now, see, he said, the Spirit sees me. Okay, Isaiah 11, Spirit alights upon the twig of the shoot of the son of Jesse, the descendant of King David. Okay, look it. This is a little poem. It's a light and enter. And there's even a, a little bit more to that, but I, I'm not going to get into it right now. It lit and entered into. And it's, okay, so here's uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 24 through 25. And the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. And he spoke to me and said to me, this is the Spirit. The Spirit did it. Go shut yourself up in your house. As for you, O mortal, cords have been placed upon you, and you have been bound with them. 
and you shall not go out among them. Oh, you're right. I, uh, and he is capital H. So you see, God is in the Spirit. The Spirit entered into me, and he, capital H, that, that's Hashem. That's God. That's how I, I just call him God. But, um, and, he, and God spoke to him and said, go shut yourself up in your house. I say it's 53, I'm not sure, it might be 8, I can't remember, where it says he was taken from the land of the living. He was taken from society. Okay, because the guy's getting long line. It has nothing to do with dying. <clears throat> That's, he, yeah, he was taken from the land of the living. Go shut yourself up in your house. It was pretty much just what he did to me. Um, I see you all mortal cords have been placed upon you, and you have been bound with them, and you shall not go out among them. Now, he's bound to his house. He's not to uh, associate with people anymore. Uh, he had me terminate my law license two weeks after he spoke to me in my 50s. He said, now you're not working anymore. I said, what am I going to do for money? He said, you're not going to have any. It is almost a mercy to it. <laughs> You're not going to have any. Um, doesn't bother me, by the way. Okay, this is uh, Ezekiel chapter 4, 4 through 8. And this is what this is about. You know, remember it said, wounded for our sins? Again, that's like me being uh, crushed with disease. And afflicted, uh, it's 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 more of okay, Christians. I mean, I know how I got to work this, but in the day of the Lord, it's all going to come back at you because uh, it's the, it's just He's looking for our sins, and I am, but not in the way Christians believe. But those are the words that make them think Isaiah fifty three is Jesus. And you tell him, wait a minute, he's crushed with a sickness that brings him, exposes him to death. Jesus wouldn't, was never sick, <coughs> and he wasn't exposed to death. That's verse 12. He wasn't exposed to death. He died. Exposure means you got exposed to it. It's a close call. Yeah. He didn't get exposed. He died. And he was never sick. And, you know, they, they don't care because they see wounded for our sins. By his blood, we are healed. You know, it's a human sacrifice, cultish religion that God absolutely abhors. And we set him up. Because, look, we don't win World War II without America. Or the world does. He is done. And uh, he knew he had to have some religion in the Gentiles. And he also knew who his chosen was and who the Gentiles got tested with. And as godly as they say they are, uh, they didn't treat his his people very well. And Isaiah 53 is a snare as much as anything. But, but so here, here we go. Then lie on your left side and let it bear the punishment of the house of Israel. Well, what's the punishment for? Sinning. For as many days as you lie on it, you shall bear their punishment. What else is that done? He's talking to a man who has spent his life trying to get people to be observant. And, and it's like, I'm sorry? <laughs> you can put me to the ground for a year and a half for their sin. You know I've been trying to stop them all my life. See, he does that kind of thing to me. It's all part of breaking your will, and making you humble, and then he just draws out anger, and it's so frustrating. Just Drawing out anger day in and day out. I hate being angry. And you, and, and you can't do anything about it. I mean, you can't hit him. <laughs> you can't even bang your head on the table. You can't do anything. It's just fury in your body. And he's done it so many times. And it's, it's just gotten weaker and weaker. And plus, he can remove it like that. As he tells me, Keith, I made a motion. I can do anything with your emotions I want. And over 13 years in small little ways here and there, he's proven it to me with a certainty. Yeah. And, and, and that's something I'm going to get blessed with uh, when people make me angry when we get to Israel or, or before. You know, 
he, 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 he changes me as much as you can change a man with his emotions and how he thinks and how he does. And then he'll top it off with his power. So it's going to be, I can't wait. I can tell you this. For I impose upon you 390 days corresponding to the number of the years of their punishment. And so you shall bear the punishment for the house of Israel. When you have completed these, you shall lie another 40 days. Then, with bared arm, set your face toward besieged Jerusalem and prophesy against it. Listen to this part. Now I put cords upon you so that you cannot turn from side to side until you complete your days of sleep. I can't go through a night without going from the left side to the right side. I mean, it's just mean. <laughs> and you think, oh, you got to do that. You know, he did. <laughs> I'll guarantee you, dude. And, and a lot more we don't know about. Oh, and let me add this. He bound his, I, I don't think, I don't see it here, but I know it's in there. He bound his, his hands are handcuffed behind him in God's power. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's a tough position to sleep, man. And staying on one side. I mean, I'm sure, you know, he got to get up and go to the bathroom and eat, but, you know. And if he tried to tiptoe out of the camp, kind of slam into the ground so hard, he didn't wake up for a week. You can't do it. Once the power's around you, you know, you, you know he's going to be, you know, they say Jonah, Jonah, <laughs> ran away, you know, he went and got on that ship and everything. You don't run away from God. He's omnipresent. God let him. And it has a little bit to do with this. This is the same process. You get the first little hint of it in Jonah. The process of, of refinement. Okay, the cords placed upon Ezekiel are not physical ropes. Ezekiel is being constrained by the power of God that envelops him and prevents him from leaving his house. Just like the man described in Isaiah 53, 8, Ezekiel is cut off from the land of the living. He's cut off. He's not removed, right? Cut off means you can't get to something. And you can't have it anymore. And then he's enduring punishment corresponding to the number of years of the guilt for the guilt of the sins of the house of Israel and Judah by having these cords of God's power prevent him from turning side to side, which should have also pinned him to the ground. You're pinned to the ground, and, and believe me, he can press you. He, he can press you hard. He, he took, you know, even sitting in bed, he, he's got a weight to him, and his power's on him. And, and he, can, he, he can push on you until you cannot breathe. You know, and that's, you know, initially, that's pretty scary. Um, uh, but, yeah, I can always, you know, I don't just hear him talking. I always feel the weight of God and his power in one way or another, and particular pains he keeps on me, and which I won't go into, that, that, that can go up or down. Yeah, I don't notice them, or I'm going to lose my mind if you don't stop doing that. So anyway, it causes crushing and bruising. Remember we got, yeah, now Ezekiel didn't have wounding, I've had wounding, but uh, uh, punishment, Chastisement, now treatment, crushing, and bruising. That's from the first six verses. Okay, chastisement, maltreatment, can be seen in this discussion between God and Ezekiel, a priestly man who followed the laws of a kosher diet, who would be beside himself as such a seemingly unrighteous punishment. But that is the point. God treating you as you could never imagine God would treat a person. You know, I want to write out of that. What you never say is, God, you wouldn't do that. Because you have this conception that God wouldn't do that. Sadly, <laughs> yes, he will. He said, well, yeah, well, and uh, I'll take it two steps forward than that. If, it, if I have a purpose, it doesn't matter what I do to you. I am God. If I have a purpose and I have a way of getting you there, I don't care what you think about me, and I can change what you think about me in a blank. So, anyway, God treating you as you can never imagine is very humbling and causes great changes in your spirit and soul. 
Remember, these are God's words. I mean, this is what he had to type. Okay, so, chastisement, not treatment. Further, take wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and amur. Put them into one vessel and bake them into bread. Eat it as many days as you want on your side. 390. You just get to have bread for a whole year plus. So, said the Lord, shall the people of Israel eat their bread unclean among the nations to which I will banish them. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, my person, this is Ezekiel, my person was never defiled, nor have I eaten anything that died of itself or was torn by beasts from my youth until now, nor has foul flesh entered my mouth. Ezekiel says, He answered me, See, I allow you cow dung instead of human excrement. Prepare your bread on that. It doesn't sound like much, but that's definitely not what's right now. And, and, and words, words that make you mad, the chastisement. Actually, back in antiquity, uh, chastisement generally meant a blow by the fist. That's Ezekiel 4, verses 13 through 15. And it, you know what that also reveals? Every time I see it, I think about it. It looks like he's giving him something dead to eat. <laughs> and not just bread. Because of what Ezekiel says. But, but I don't know that. And see, again, God doesn't tell me everything. He tells me what he says. He, I, I tell you what you need to know. Me not telling you everything, and you never know what's going to happen uh, in the next moment, much less the next day. Is, is part of this. So, yeah, I, I, I certainly don't tell the future. I'm not a seer type of... That's not what a prophet is, ever, ever was. That's what Rambam thought. Uh, it's not somebody who can see the future. It's somebody who speaks to God face to face. It's, it's a prophet of God, like Moses. He's a prophet. Uh, the, the books of the prophets, you know, they're telling you, and God said, Lord, uh, uh, the Lord came to me and said this and that. Well, that means he's a man of divine beings. All the prophets were men of divine beings if they were writing the words of God. Which, of course, Judaism doesn't have a clue about because they don't believe that there's an angel of his presence or a Holy Spirit. God, again, he, he's obviously set it up. You know where you find that? Two verses in Isaiah 63. It's just tucked away in there. But once you know it, you change, yeah, I mean, again, proofs, because I can't know these things. <laughs> you know, they, I will say that I can figure out the Bible better than every Jewish rabbi or uh, uh, religious uh, commentator of all time. You know, because I got, it's so easy. Jeremiah 31, see the time is coming. Okay, we have new covenants here. Where, where do we go? Hey, how about Malachi 3? How about Malachi 3? Yeah, there's an angel of a covenant. <laughs> and there's a messenger. But of course, it is a lie. Um, the land blooms again from desolation. Uh, to, uh, the cities have been restored, Jerusalem rebuilt. The covenant's here. See your time's coming, see your time's coming, see your time's coming. Okay, well, this is the day of the Lord. Um, huh. How do we know? How do we can't see him? He's got to have a visible representation. Okay? He's got to have a man. Guess what? He needs to describe him. You know, go read about Moses. <laughs> he had far less information, uh, proof than I did. Far less proof. Basically, it was knowing that it was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that was telling him to bring them out of Israel, out of, out of Egypt. And, and three miracles. Throwing a staff, a rod, turns into a snake. Uh, uh, a drop of water that turns into blood, and another going to remember the next one. Oh, showing a leprosy on his hand, back into his cup, uh, leprosy gone. And on that basis, 600,000 men. <laughs> 
600,000 men in their, fam in their family, so I don't know, a million, this and that, uh, follow him out of Egypt. They did a lot of complaining, but, you know. And, yeah, I got a man that way, that's who I am. Just knowing this stuff. Just knowing how, how Ezekiel is your key. You know, God set it up that way. He put Ezekiel through the fire of fire, and it's based on the punishment for the sins, you know, wounded for our sins. It's all there. Taken from society. Spirit sees him and entered him. He can hear God's words. God is in his spirit. Uh, picking back up with God's words, just as in Isaiah 53, where God's righteous servant is punishing, is punished for the sins and guilt of Israel that he is not guilty of, and God pronounced in a press of judgment, who can describe his abode? Indicating that part of this judgment is being sent to his house, sent in a press of judgment, and being cut off from the land of the living in the power of God, just as Ezekiel was. Even though there were no sins to bear by the new covenant. See, the new covenant is here. It's here. It's where the angel lead. The angel, uh, Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1. I'm sending my uh, messenger before me to clear the way, and I will return to my temple suddenly. And the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. He gets here first. See, that goes back to Christianity. That goes to be with everybody sins for you when Moshe gets here. And he can't he can't offer himself, they, they say and he offered himself for sin. I mean, the word is actually he offered himself for guilt. There's no sin. When 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 I made my agreement on that with God. It was it was like a t the, the test of Abraham, the binding of Isaac. Because he, he said, I'm offering myself for something that's not there. The, uh, you know, everybody's sin free. Because of the new covenant. They, it, that's another thing. It's mind-boggling. The Christians just say, uh, uh, the new covenant, that's Jesus. we got Jesus. Well, why did it go from written for a prophet to tell you about, who's described in 53, why do they go from written to human sacrifice? What's that about? Explain that to me. See, they change it. They say, well, that's the end of it. Because they recognize it in the book of Hebrews. You don't find it in the Gospels. But it's in the book of Hebrews. Uh, I have a YouTube video on that. I did it just yesterday. All of this makes Ezekiel suitable for God's purpose with him to prosper as a pros as a prophet to the Assyrian Babylon exiles. And again, they come back and build the second temple. To have Ezekiel do and say whatever he is commanded to do and say by God without hesitation, anger, or remorse, hurt feelings, to remove his bitterness at being maltreated by God. You get used to that for a while. You still don't like it, though. It is also for God's righteous servant to be made suitable for God's purpose, to make the many righteous by his knowledge with long life, and doing whatever he is commanded to do and say by God without hesitation, anger, or remorse. I have a lot more here in the book, but I might, I, it's kind of superfluous right now. Ezekiel is going through the same fire refinement in the hand of God as God's righteous servant does, though he was not asked to, I've already covered that. Okay. Well, it's very interesting. And again, it's the proof of who I am. This is scripture, by the way. Isaiah 53, the name of the Lord. 
It's about 285 pages long. Uh, that, that includes a uh, uh, addendum that's a one paragraph summary of every chapter, which of course, if I ever get them published, and I will, um, uh, that everybody can uh, copy and, and give to your Christian friend when you're in an argument with them. You say, okay, well, here's my backup. So that's why I would put it in there. Um, can't really think of anything else. Thank you very much for listening. Everybody have a good day.